Welcome back to the Nurturing Coach channel. I'm Sarah Squires, aka The Nurturing Coach. Um, today I want to look at the three steps the narcissist takes to control the divorce process. So during the divorce process, the narcissist always feels like they're two steps ahead of you. They take control from the very start and you're always left playing catch up. And that can be very difficult because often you're having to prove things that didn't happen. And that's virtually impossible. You can't prove something didn't happen. Um, and the emphasis in family court, unfortunately, is when an allegation is made that the you have to prove that something didn't happen rather than them having to prove that it did. And so the stages that they take um, all line up to give them that full control. And then this often means that they have financial control and control over the children. So we're going to outline those steps today and then look at how you can overcome that. So step one happens during the relationship. They undermine you constantly. They make you believe that you can't cope without them, that you are incapable and also that other people think that about you as well. There'll be regular little digs that other people have commented how you struggle with something or how they are the better parent or, you know, th those sort of subtle put downs that damage your self-esteem. So you're already feeling a little bit uncertain, even though you've found the courage to end the relationship, you, you want at your best. Add to that the push-pull dynamic of the relationship has probably left you with trauma and stress and even PTSD or complex PTSD, meaning that your cognitive function is hindered, you are struggling with your sleep, you probably don't come across as being particularly coherent because there's so much, you're still trying to process what happened to you and you feel that people don't understand, so you need to tell them more and in more depth. And actually, it can be misinterpreted as being, um, like I say, incoherent, unstable, and also paranoid and obsessed. So the stage one happens during the relationship, which leads into stage two, which starts at the separation. So, so once you decide that you the relationship is over and that, that you are going to go ahead with a divorce. That backdrop is then used to blame you for everything. So they've already set the seed with a lot of people and with you that the fault lies solely at your feet. And although you're starting to realise that that isn't true, you have realised their behaviours and what they brought, your confidence isn't where it should be, particularly for a court battle. And so... When they start making claims to other people, whether that be friends and family or professionals, they say it with such certainty because they believe it, to be fair. They do believe they are superior. They believe they have that grandiose sense of self. And so when they're criticising you and upping themselves, that's very genuine. And it comes across as being very genuine. And so it's it's automatically believed. Whereas you who still haven't quite made sense of what's happened, don't have all the answers. So you come across much less convincing. So step two is all about how they create this narrative that you were the source of all the problems and they gain that credibility in that tale. And step three is the ramping up of that. So they will begin to make allegations so make allegations against you which could be neglect it could be violence it could be aggression it could be alcoholism drug taking prostitution it could be anything depending on sometimes there may even be a slither of truth in something that they're saying you may have got drunk or you may be drinking a little bit more to cope with the relationship they will exaggerate those truths and so it makes it very hard but that narrative and the, those allegations gain momentum and credibility because like i say they believe it so they 
when they speak, they sound very believable because to them it is the truth. They're also very impassioned with what they say because blaming you makes them feel better. So when they're bad mouthing you, they gain relief from that. Whereas for you, we're not most people are naturally horrible. We it can be uncomfortable to say horrible things about someone else and, and that uncomfortability can be interpreted as being a fabrication, an untruth. And so step three is all about the maintaining of that so that their credibility increases. And what they also do in this stage is they will involve the children. So they will condition the children to know that to access their love, there's certain conditions that they have to meet. One of them being rejecting you whether that be an actual physical rejection of no longer wanting to see you or rejecting your parenting, telling you that you, you don't love them, that you're to blame. And that can be very hard as a parent to be in that position where you don't really want your child to know the ins and outs of your separation and your divorce. And yet your child is coming at you with adult information. You're in that predicament of how much do what do I say how much truth do I give and how do I protect them from this when the other parent is not doing that so that's the three stages that they do to get control in the divorce so how do you how do you deal with that well obviously step one happened during the relationship so there's little you can do about that if you're at the point now where you're going for divorce because it's done. The best thing you can do to counteract stage one is get treatment. Get treatment for the PTSD. Get treatment for those symptoms so that your brain, the parts of your brain that have been dormant due to the PTSD and the flooding of those chemicals can start to come alive again, can wake up and give you the best chance of putting your case forward in a coherent and processed pattern of um information rather than rambling which i work with i work with clients that are in this situation and there is a lot of rambling because they are they're just literally trying to keep telling the story but obviously in a court process that will look and be interpreted by people who don't understand what you've been through as being unstable and made up and and so in order to counteract that you need to get into a place where you can deliver your truth, your story in a way that suits the court. Very similar to how the narcissist deliver, delivers it, only it's the truth. So get out ahead, get the treatment, deal with what you've been through in the relationship because you are going to get abused again through the court process, both by the narcissist who is still trying to control you through that, but also by the process itself. So Get in first and get the treatment. To counteract stage two, you need to know what to expect. You need to make sure you have a solicitor who knows exactly what they're doing. You need to feel strong and solid. So support throughout that. Having someone who understands the process and understands what you are up against and can advise you on the best way to do that. It's also about knowing what your own triggers are because during the process, the narcissist will use those triggers that they know about you and they'll use them to keep trying to get you to react, to improve and to um, reinforce the narrative that they have created. So, for example, if their narrative is that you're unstable and they make a horrendous allegation against you, something that maybe happened in your childhood or something so abhorrent and, that, and they know that you find it absolutely abhorrent, then you will react to that. You will react defensively, obviously, because it's not true, but you'll also get very upset by that. So if on a backdrop of you are unstable, then that would be a tick in the, oh, look, they are unstable because they're behaving in that way. And actually, it's a natural reaction to being accused of something, but the way it's delivered is how it easily gets misinterpreted. And the stage three is understanding the smear campaign and what that involves around the children, the alienation that is going to happen so that you can gain, can get out ahead of that, that you can not be triggered by the process. You can learn to manage the truth. Now, you can't control what anyone else will say about you, but you can control your reaction and the, you can control the information that comes from you. Um, and also 
you can learn the skills to manage the children and how to support them through having a narcissist parent. I hope you found that video useful. Um, divorcing a narcissist is a very difficult process. Like I say, you not only will have further abuse from them, but you'll also be abused by the process as well. If you are looking for support, I do have the Facebook group. I will share the link in the description. It's a free group. It has lots of peer support within there, training, free information, first look at these videos. And so it's a great place to go if you are divorcing a narcissist so that you can be fully prepared. People will share with you what worked, what didn't work. We can get, we can share the pitfalls and the successes and give you hope that you can get the result that you can as well as giving you the skills and insight to make sure that you can get the result that you want from the court and the divorce process. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you're watching on YouTube and do share with anyone who you think will benefit from this video. So take care everyone and I will speak to you soon. Bye bye.